Hey, welcome to the channel, friends. As always, man, I am stoked to see you. So we're going to start a mock board, a study guide, if you will, uh, to help prepare you for the promotion board or for a competition board. So let's get to this. So hang on tight. All right, so let's go ahead and get started, man. Um, losing everything here. So we're going to start off with uh, AR670-1. This is wear and appearance of military uniforms. And so I'm going to give you the, the top. Um, so I'm going to give you the top questions, the top standard questions that you could be asked. And I'm going to give you some situational questions, which you're going to hear more of uh, in the promotion boards and competition boards as you keep going. I'm going to suspect the competition boards are going to keep uh, with uh, standard questions. So question number one, and I'm going to read a question. I'm going to pause. That way you can pause the video if you want and then give your own answer and then listen to the answer and then we'll go on to the next question. What does a soldier's appearance measure? Soldier's appearance measures your professionalism. That's right. What is a matter of pride for all soldiers? At the proper wear of the army uniform. What are the different types of badges that can be worn on the military uniform? The four badges that can be worn on the military uniform include marksmanship, combat or special skill, identification badges, or foreign badges. What is the significance of the stars being forward on the, on the flag on your shoulder patch? And of course that symbolizes us moving forward and towards battle. Now, what does each service stripe represent on the uniform? Each stripe on the uniform represents three years of honorable service. In what situations are soldiers not required to wear headgear in uniform? Headgear is not required in the following situations. When it would interfere with the safe operation of a motor vehicle, when indoors, or when attending a social event after retreat. And so then we'll move on to some situational questions, and this is going to be a little bit more of a, of a conversation piece uh, because, you know, there may not be a right or wrong way to answer a lot of situational questions. So the first one is, you know, you're inspecting uh, your team in the ASUs and you notice that a male uh, soldier insignia rank isn't parallel with the inside of the edge of the lapel. How do you correct this deficiency? And so this, could be, this type of question could be asked any number of ways. You, you see something on a uniform that is not correct. What do you do? And so what do you do, right? Uh, I, I think regardless, because um, this is going to lead in, into the next question, we have to always make sure that however we answer this question, that it can be applicable to both male and female. And a lot of NCOs, I think, are afraid of placing hands on, on or rulers or measurements or whatever the case is, you know, when, when we're inspecting things. Uh, but I, th I just think we have to be cognizant that we need to inspect everybody the exact same way. So if it was me and I noticed that somebody's uh, U.S. insignia disc isn't parallel uh, with the edge of the lapel, I'm going to tell them right up front, say, hey, your disc is not um, attached properly to your uniform, you need to take a little bit more pride, professionalism, pay more, a little bit more attention, attention to detail. We'll make the annotation here, and I'll ask them to make sure they understand, you know, what it is that they need to do to fix this, and put a timeline. I will reinspect you uh, next Friday if that's what the case was, um, or if I was, was if it was intentionally an inspection prior to an event, then I'm going to make sure I inspect this prior to that next event. Uh, to make sure that the soldier is squared away. I don't have to fix it. I don't have to come up and touch it and, and make a fix. I'm probably just going to smudge it. You see, and then with my next question was, uh, you know, you find the same deficiency on a female soldier. How do you do this? Because what I'm going to, because what a lot of dudes are going to say is, well, I'm just going to come up and I'm going to switch it. And I'm going to fix it. If it was on a male soldier. And on a female soldier, they're going to be like, ah, oh, well, it's, you know, it's too close to, um, a no no spot, and I don't want to do that to a female. So, if you're not going to do it to a female soldier, why are you going to do it to a male soldier? Because now I can just start unthreading uh, this ball of wax here and uh, see what we can, can't get into. So, the next situational question is you know, you're walking through the PX and you notice that a service member in civilian clothes wearing headgear. What is your response? 
Well, so on some posts, according to the Blue Book, and that's kind of where this question comes from, is you're not allowed to wear headgear in indoors. I think uh, the last time I checked, uh, when I was down at Fort Hood, on <laughs> Fort Hood, uh, that, was, that was the case. They didn't want you to wear headgear indoors. Up here, J.B. Lim, it's not a big deal. Um, so if that's part of the Blue Book, then, then you go and approach that uh, service member and say, excuse me, are you aware that the current policy uh, is that you're not allowed to wear civilian headgear indoors? It's that easy. All right, everybody, so there you go. That's 670-1. I'll leave you with, with a couple tips. And so the first one is, if you're being asked a standard question, then the best thing to do is to throw that part of that question in your answer. So, for example, you know, the very first question was, what does a soldier's appearance measure? A soldier's appearance measures the professionalism, as opposed to just saying professionalism. Of course, you want to throw in first sergeant or sergeant major, whatever the case might be. So, first sergeant, a soldier's appearance measures the soldier's professionalism, or something to this effect. So, what that does, really, is it slows down the board, especially if you're in a competition board and it's more shotgun style and things are happening you know, left and right, then that's a way for you to be able to slow things down, right? Slow it down. Regain control of the board. Remember that the board members are there for you. You're not there for them. And by you being able to do that, you're intentionally, you know, you're not spit, spitting off your words, professionalism, right? Sergeant Major, and then we start to slow things down. Put everything back into your kit bag, right? Hey, if you enjoyed the content of the video, make sure you like it, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell so you can stay up to date on some future content. As always, until then, y'all, you keep grinding.